Okay, here we go. We're on the other side of the page. We're on number three. Given, what's that thing called? With that hat tells us it's a ray. Ray PF. So look at your picture right away. Ray PF. That would be from here to here. Bisects angle EPG. EPG. What should you mark on your picture if I say something is bisected? Equal marks. So you need to put, good Martha, equal and equal. Those two things are equal. Ooh, equal, equal, equal. I'm going to do something with equals in our equation. Because look, you have to set up the whole thing. We know we want to prove x equals 6. All right, so make a t-chart here. Um, and then we are going to fill this in. So step number one, you always write what you are, not always, but usually, write what you are given. So you are given that ray PF bisects angle EPG. And put number one, that's because you are given that. All right, if something bisects, then it creates... I already said the word multiple times, so did you all, creates equal angles, right? Yeah. So that's what you need to say on step two. What angles are equal? Do not put any algebra stuff in. I want to hear letters. Angle blank is congruent to angle blank. So angle yeah. EPF, very good. And angles are congruent to angle FPG. And the reason, how did you know that? This is a new reason we haven't heard yet. How did you know because it's a bisector? So this would be definition of bisector. You can put angle bisector if you want. Um, that would be a more formal term. Definition of angle bisector. Tayshawn. Definition of angle bisector. Okay, now, if we know those two angles are equal, then we know that their measures are equal, right? Okay, so some, t some people put on here a measure of angle blank is equal to the measure of the angle blank, and they put definition of congruence. I usually leave that part off, so I'm going to just keep going here. EPF is what angle up here? What's it represented by? Yes, so we're going to say 4x plus 2 is equal to FPG. How big is FPG? Good, 6x minus 10. And how did I know they were equal, or what did I do there? Substituted. I substituted this in for that and that in for that. So this is called substitution. All right, next thing you are going to do is start solving. Remember, you want to show x equals 6. So what do I do from here? Um, not lad-like terms because you look at both sides of the equal. Are both sides of the equal already added together? So then you start solving. If you got x's on both sides, you've got to move x's to one side. Subtract 4x from both sides. That's what, exactly what you want to do. And write that small. So line 4 is what you get after you subtract 4x from both sides. So this and this would cancel. What are you left with? 2, two equals 2x two minus 10. So step number 4, to get that, you did subtraction. Okay, we're almost there. I got to get x by itself still. What's next? Yep, add what? 10 to both sides. Write that small. So step 5, you get 12 equals 2x. Good job. And that was because you did what? Addition, Addition property. I'm just going to write add. Okay, we're on our last step, step 6. Last step is divide. Very good. So if you divide both sides by 2, don't get in the habit of moving your x. Leave your x where it is. What's 12 divided by 2? 6 equals x. So step number 6 is the division property. 
And is that what we wanted to prove? Yes. yes. Okay, good. All right, so we are out of time with that.